Hi, it's Tema, and here I am back to vlog today. Yay! More, more Toku vlogging. And um, I would like to give a couple of uh, shout outs real quick before we continue on. Uh, first, the first shout out is to Duhod. Uh, who who has been watching and helping me and giving me con uh, criticism and feedback? Thank you, thank you for, for such. And um, I hope you continue to to actually help with this. Um, and I hope that I, I can improve and, and really take your criticism, go further with it. Um, and finally, uh, of course, borrowed phrases and but you might. They are awesome. They are whom these the subject. Uh, came from. Um, I'm gonna leave their actually their blogs in the description, so check them out. They're they're pretty cool people. Um, for pretty fun people too. I've known them for God since oh five. I think <laughs> it's a long time. Almost. I have known I have known them and, and a bunch of the other people that from a previous fandom for like ten years. So um, long time I've known them. They're pretty cool people. Uh, so so that's that. And for the the eleven people that have watched me so far, some of you are probably my friends, and I appreciate that. That you will listen to me rant about Toku for ages. And speaking of which, back to back to talking about Toku again today. We are going to talk about dark, and how dark doesn't necessarily mean it's mature. Uh, how dark kind of is. How, how each franchise embraces the dark dark stuff, and kind of a more serious note on why I think the American side of things needs to embrace it. First off, this is kind of quick, but dark does not necessarily mean mature. People really still get this confused. Now, too much dark is like having too much saccharine sweetness, light, everything's good. If everything's bad and stupid, if it, not if stupid, but everything's bad and nothing goes right in the world and everything, it's still just as boring. And it, it basically still has, it's just one shade of life. There's also the intermix that because adult themes makes it mature and dark. Nah. See boobies and, and, and gratuitous sex and violence uh, in, 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 in stuff does not mean that it's mature. It's just, it's, it's gratuitous. It's, it's childlike and it's not in its depiction because it, it doesn't have, I don't want to say some sense, but it doesn't have the kind of, um, the life, uh, complexities to it. Um, I guess what I'm saying, trying to say is, and people have made this argument a little bit better than I have, but. I uh, think of 90s comics and think how much you roll your eyes, the grim darkness and the boobies and the guns, ah. How much you roll your eyes and go, yeah, really, that's mature. Because those things are in there does not make it mature. And, um, but what I think people like about it is that when it's embraced into these things, it, it, it's what makes it mature. It, when you embrace the dark with the light. Um, I have talked with this on Twitter um, with this argument is this is where you see it um, when when those two come together you have the complexity that is that is life because life is both light you have fun you 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 know you have people you love and everything even even when things are down and then you have darkness you know you have you know depression you have um, murder and you have you know violence in our society so you know you have those and when they come together is where you you kind of more have the maturity and this is also something that I think people also mistake dark things that have the complexity for being dark super sentai uh, really gets it it's like oh it's dark and super surreal and hardcore oh look because people die in it and everything ah and I'm like yes and then they have come sing with us after the commercial break come sing and dance with us uh, um, they have, uh, you know, farting monsters, monsters that are, you know, fart propelled. They have, uh, ups, you know, wind blowing and, and skirts flying and you can see, you know, school panties. And it, this is comedy, by the way. And, you know, dick jokes, all the dick jokes. You have puns everywhere and, because it's Japan, Japan's 
pretty pun based humor. And um, along with that, like, you know, you, you have that, and then, like, one of the things that really blowed my mind in Shinkanger is where this discussion came from. I'm like, yes, this is super serial, guys. Super serious Sentai here with two robos. One of them is about to shut down, and the other one smacks it in the butt to, to, to make sure it does not shut down. Super serial. And. <laughs> It's like, no, are you watching the same show? Cause it's not serious. But at the same time, it's not serious as in it's dark. But at the same time, it embraces those elements and you know, those sillinesses, uh, it, it comes and goes. Just the same as the dark elements comes and goes and the drama keeps it going. And that's what you want, the drama to keep it going and the life and the light and dark to be balanced. If they're not balanced, you get something like Wild Force. Wild Force came because, you know, people really wanted Dark. The producers are like, we're gonna, you know, people really like Time Force. Kids love Time Force. People of all ages like Time Force. Maybe it was because it was Dark. Now that's, that's speculation, but it seems to have been that way. They wanted to, to focus on what made Time Force good. So they focused on Dark. And unfortunately, you got a hodgepodge weirdness with Wild Force, and it's a reason why I think it's a, it, it is on the list of bad seasons, is because it doesn't know what tone it wants to take. It really has these mood swings. It's not a balance between, you know, where you have the lightheartedness and the comedy, but you know, then you have the drama to keep it going, and then you have the super dark parts of that drama. No, you have kind of the drama to keep it going, but mostly the really stupid highs, you know, Max and Danny's weird adventures, you have Cole and, it's the best to describe it, Cole, you have Princess Shayla essentially acting like the most hippie, the hippie person ever, like, you really, th you know, with the whole, like, just, just as the lion is is king of his jungle, so is his ranger. Yeah, let's trust the new guy with it. Um, <laughs> or you know her her immaturities in dealing with love, which was kind of one of the more complex dark things was, was her and, and Merrick's relationship. But yeah, you have this, this weird thing along. But then a long time you have Merrick, who you know was got who wanted to, you know, who who saved, who helped save the day, but he corrupted himself with evil to do it. Uh, along with his, his relationship with Shayla and, you know, how they can never be together in the darkness. And then you have Cole's parents and how they died. Dear God, you had essentially the internet nice guy here. Um, go, like, like, per, ready to propose to Cole's mother when Cole's father d does it first, and you don't, you don't even know if she likes the guy. And they're researching the Animarium and how, how it might exist. And of course, the big bad, his jealousy is getting stronger as he sees them building the life he wanted. He wanted a family with her and all that, and ah. Uh, and then you know they they go on the exposition, and and he finds the um the master orc seed and he eats it and he becomes master orc and kills them and including trying to kill cole but he doesn't succeed at that cole cole lives and um he was raised in the jungle so you know but but that in itself you know the jealousy the building and the killing of the jealousy that's a very very dark element to the story to where like not moments ago you have the, the comedic moment where, you know, Taylor punches a hippie and says, you've been drafted. And then, you know, the whole, like, the, the whole squabble over rules and then the, the really dumb episode about the whole, like, put your wish in the bottle and throw it into the sea. You know, you, you have those really sweet saccharine moments mixed with something that dark. It does not know what it wants to be. So... Just because, and, and that's the thing, just because it mixes it doesn't mean it's gonna mix well. And unfortunately, Wild Force is a great example of trying to do things and trying to think that, oh, it's because we need to add more dark, when really you just need to balance that. It's a balancing act, you need to balance the two. And Sentai, I think, overall does better. But that's, that's an another thing entirely. 
Um, and now for kind of the, the more serious element of this, which is talking about the, the repercussions and, and how each society looks at, at violence. And Japan, I, I have a lot of things I don't like about their culture. I can dislike some other things. And they have, and because there's things I don't like about our culture, and there's things I don't like about a lot of cultures. I can like and dislike things. But one of the things I really, really, really like is the fact they don't sugarcoat these things for their kids. They kind of don't. Once once they hit about four or five, which is where Sentai, Sentai is for, you know, set, you know four or five and up. You have, you know, Shonen and Shoujo's. They tend to be for older kids that are, you know, the preteens to, to before preteens, you know. They don't sugarcoat these things. They don't sugarcoat that violence hurts you. Violence will cause you to bleed and your helmet to bust open and you know you can and your suit to bust or depower. And if you get depowered, you're gonna get injured and then you know you, you'll bleed and you'll bruise and you'll you'll be out of, of battle for a while. And if you try to go into battle, well, you might not be yourself. Um, or you could die from those injuries, because you're dealing with forces that, yeah, without that suit can kill you. So you have, you know, and Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Z, not using the, the Sentai thing, is a great example of this. It is the most quintessential throw key blasts at each other and yell shonen that you have. You know, the, 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 the one that a lot of shonens take example from. And here it is, you know, this outlandish thing where, ah, you know, where, where that's like an entire episode. People die in it. Of course, they come back to life because of the Dragon Balls, but, you know, even the Dragon Balls had their limits with bringing people back. Uh, people die in it. Goku's in a body cast sometimes. Um, you know, people go into the hospital after these huge fights to defend Earth from these monsters or people that essentially can annihilate shit. You know, they're hurt. They're injured. Some of them are dead. It shows the consequences of a fight. And in America, we just are like, oh, can't, we can't show this to the kids. What will the kids think? Oh, no, the kids, they will be exposed and go hit people. And I will knock down Power Rangers. But, you know, they, they'll, they'll be like, oh, the kids will go and they'll hit people. And, and... Oh no, why don't you think of the kitties? Because then they're just going to act it out and hurt others. And I'm like, but that's where they're getting it from. They're not seeing the consequences. They're just seeing, you know, all their power to just kind of, ah, oh, we're slightly injured, but we're okay. You don't see, you know, you know, bruises, cuts, and scars from it. You don't see that sometimes this, these blasts will actually blow some of the suit up. You don't see death. There's been about like four Power Ranger deaths that were Rangers, or became Rangers in the case of one of them, of how he got better. But yeah, they got better. Some of them I can excuse, but some of them, I was just like, really? They got better. No. You fell down a crevice, and I think that crevice closed up. I think you're very dead, and I think your body's not gonna be there. You... One person gets vaporized! <laughs> yes, her soul is stuck in the sword, and I love Kindress, but she does get essentially vaporized. And yet, she comes back at the end, because part of her soul, sword, uh, soul is in the sword, and yay, she's back. And I love Kendrick's, I love her, but I'm like, no, you don't do that. You, you don't, so that you do a heroic sacrifice, and then go back on it. Excuse me. And that's the thing. Kids kids watch this and kids are going to see this and go, well, I can take a laser gun to the chest, which might equate to a real gun. And I'll be fine. As long as I have spandex on or something. And even then you see people do it in, in real time and they're fine. <coughs> you know? And um, excuse me while I'll get a glass of water. So, you know, you see that, and they think, well, I can hit someone with this, this stick, and they'll, they'll be fine. They don't, here's the deal that we, what we don't realize with kids, and we, when we shelter them, is that kids actually have the cognitive abilities, as most adults, they, they can problem solve. 
The issue is they don't, and I'm really simplifying this, they kind of also are still learning and developing. But the main issue is they do not have the life experience that we do. We know when we get hit that it hurts, that it will bleed. They don't know that. Even when you sit down and, and talk to them, they don't see the representation of it. So they will go out and replicate it and then get hurt. And because they're not seeing that, because they're not, basically what I'm saying is because they're looking at that and that's their conclusion. And they're going, well, I won't get hurt because I saw X not getting hurt. Before you get on me about maybe, you know, think of the children in the video game bots, I'm advocating to showing violence to children and actually showing the ramifications. And I actually think video games are probably the best genre because when you do hit something, well, it, it will flicker in the old days, but you know, it does kind of, that you actually see the consequences of, of violence with video games more than often. You shoot something, it gets shot and it bleeds. So, you know, you, you see that. And that's, that's the issue, is because we're so sheltering, we don't give the kids the necessary things to go, don't try this at home. So, you know, as much as we can tell them that, they're still going to look at that. But Borrowed Phrases uh, once put it in his blog that he and his brother, um, he and his brother, uh, you know, they would see this on TV and they would go and they hit each other with sticks. Ah, uh, and then they would realize, oh, that, that shit bleeds. Oh, that hurts. So. So, you know, that's the deal. And that's, and that's something that we come from as being adults. Now, they were, we were both, he's like, about to turn 30 next year. I'm 20, I'm about to turn 27. You know, we we are adults now. We're looking back at this and we're going, I wish this happened. So that's us more talking about as adults. And that is our kind of the more serious thing. I will end on that today. Uh, next time we will have the fun and excitement that is actually discussing something a little bit more lighthearted, which is Super Sentai versus versus Power Rangers and kind of the difference between the two. And then I will might vlog about other things. But till then, see you next time. Bye.